This is Colorata Tapalpa Ice, which is big. And to me, it sort of looks ugly. <laughs> Not because of those dots, but because it looks so similar to a beautiful Mexican giant. See, look at it. So Tapalpa Ice, the ugly one or this beautiful Mexican giant, take your pick. So to me, I think this is nicer and fatter and more beautifuler. But, there's a but, I know. I just found this Echeveria Colorata Tapalpa Ice, but it's got some nice lines, funky lines. And of course, I paid good money for this. I don't even know how I forgot this. But now, I'm comparing it to this Colorata, the palpa, no ice, just the palpa. And this one has got some beautiful red tips. So now let's compare it with this other one. So this one is still small, but I think one day it's going to grow some nice red tips. Like these other ones. Isn't that gorgeous? This is the flower stalk of Echeveria Blue Metal. Look how beautiful this plant is. It's gorgeous. So this is sort of a redder version, a more red I should say. I'm half asleep, sorry, uh, of <laughs> Blue Metal. Since it's flowering and about to bloom, bloom, bloom soon and in time for this hairy one. That flower stalk over there that's also about to bloom belongs to Echeveria Leucotreca. This one's wearing a jumper because it's cold and I like its hairiness. It is so hairy. Look at it. It's beautiful and now look all of them are got some inflorescence and I want to cross this one with this blue metal so I want the Leucotreca to produce a red heavy jumpered one <laughs> and this blue metal <laughs> I'm gonna cross this so I'm gonna take some pollen from here transfer it to there and this one I'm gonna get a pollen from somewhere else that's flowering at the moment I'm planning to cross it with this actually the variegated Monroe or orange Monroe that's flowering as well. It's about to produce some flower stalk and I'm gonna cross the two of them. So imagine having a red version of that. <laughs> so look at that. Would it, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be gorgeous to have? Look at that, even the inflorescence variegated. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that. So it's just about to pop out. So I'm just hoping that this will grow quick enough to catch up to this one before this one blooms so they have to I have to time it perfectly if not I have to cross this beautiful orange Munro Varigata with something else that's already blooming at the same time this grows quite big and this is now a medium size I've got a bigger uh, blue metal which is a different strain to this one this is the strain that came from this one is this is the original plant or the original stem so up the top there that's already been chopped 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 so that's already growing somewhere else over there that one and this one's now grew out of the side so these three plants which i need to harvest and let the main stem or the mother stem die off because that will just die off but this one was long overdue for a harvest so all those roots that are showing there that means they need to be harvested but wouldn't be nice to have a hybrid or a plant that's halfway between an Echeveria supia, which is next to it, which actually this is a Sedevaria, I think. And that one, if you cross the two, yeah, I think it's an Echeveria, anyway. And it's flowering at the moment, so I'm gonna cross this with this one, or basically cross this one with that one. So this one will have seeds that's halfway between a supia and uh, blue metal and that way the rosette shape will have like a lovely rose shape only smaller wouldn't it be gorgeous just curious to see if that actually will work but then I have to wait till next year to find out the result when I grow the seeds from it apart from that I'm just inspecting now the damage if any 
of the rain because when it rains the problem is I don't mind if it rains heavily but when it only rains like a little bit and then it stops and rains again it's getting only a portion of my succulents wet a lot of them still remains dry so this is the reason why sometimes when it rains I decide to water again because see this one's here even though it's more exposed and you can see this ladder has got water droplets in it or it's still wet but see this Studebaker which is at the back there and the leaf grown Chihuahua Yensis is really really dry see so look at the soil so this I need to water it or else this is the last of my Studebaker this plant will grow big and then it will decide to die again and I always seem to manage to get a leaf or two to keep it going but anyway if this dies again I'm just gonna give up on it because it's not worth putting all that energy into growing something and eventually it's just a little uh, plant so we don't want plants like that we want things to live and not try and commit harakiri <laughs> so which is not good I was looking for one of my older raindrops and this one is exposed out here that part of the stem got hit by the frost and this plant poor thing so I have to it's already oops I have to chop 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 that because this one is about to die by the time spring comes this will already be dead so if more frost comes that's just gonna be goodbye teardrops you're gonna be lonely teardrops look how beautiful this agavoy this number 40 I think they just named this number 40 because they ran out of names. So I'm sure they have number 39, number 38, 35, 34, so on and so forth. But this number 40 is just gorgeous, beautiful color. But the color only shows up autumn and winter. It starts changing in autumn and then winter is the height of its coloration. What I do with this ones now and after winter, spring comes, I take this and put it somewhere a little bit protected to try and protect it from the sun because the minute the sun hits it, uh, especially during summer, this all turns into green, boring green like the one inside there. So the whole plant. So that's why different locations or plants, succulents basically, not all succulents, like to be out in the sun. Some of them color even in the shade. This Krasula, what are, it was your name? Something funny. Mumji, Mumji. It is Mumji Matsuri. <laughs> this one's now, they're growing. I don't feature Krasula that much because I'm not sure about their hardiness because this always happens. They sort of grow like this and then these ones die off and some of them do grow pups on the side like this but if you don't harvest it in time see like those ones there they need to be chop 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 away from the mother plant so I just let it grow a little bit bigger and then that way this one now you actually cut the flowers off unless I want to save the flowers and get some seeds which is not necessary because they grow so easily this is capitella something or oh, fusca this fusca as well see look how it's dying off the bloom is finished now so I need to bring this inside and chop 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 that one hang on I'm slowly waking up so I only probably have like one straight hour of sleep and I've been waking up every time every 20 30 minutes because of my toes my ingrown toenail I hate it but anyway this is the worst it's ever been now this one will bring you inside and we're gonna harvest oh. you this casula Capitella thirsiflora is looking absolutely beautiful. Look at those nice, hang on, pink. It's becoming pinkier on the edges, but in the center it's like salmon color. And I need to propagate this. I don't want to bring it inside in case I forget about it again so I've decided now that since I potted up this pot here which I haven't even put some top dressings I've potted up my other plants that was on a different area that I've been meaning to put in a bigger pot now this one actually I brought it in and then it took me a week before I could pot it up because we've been really busy and flat out lately with hospital visits and everything Hybe's good he's on his 
fourth set of chemo but anyway we need to propagate this this is the ideal pot to put them in change my soil mix right now and as you can see I've also run out of granite but I do have some small top dressing granite I can put in there but even this one here look at the good little duck hello duck quack quack so this one I've also done at the same time just potting up some plants that needed uh, potting up into a bigger pot now anyway let's go in here now this one because it's so small and delicate I'm gonna use my <laughs> nail clippers this is a nipa we call it nipa for your cuticle crassula is actually growing during winter or when it cools down from autumn winter and spring they're growing in summer they sort of die down and look ugly hang on I'll just show you an ugly let me look for an ugly crassula so this is what happens in summer they grow leggy it's flowering right now and the flower stinks by the way so anyway we hardly have any bees this year so I reckon if they bloom that would attract a lot of the flies now <laughs> even in winter and that will pollinate a lot of the flowers uh, that are blooming in winter but anywho like this one now see those new growth in the bottom there so those are the next season's plants okay anyway this one I can't get to it but do I have the okay there's another tool I've got on my left side so this is a cutter look and I'm just gonna chop that off now this one you can see the roots I don't know if you can see that but we've got roots growing there see so what we're going to do is I got my little poker stick and this thing is swinging around so I'm just going to put a hole there deep enough and that can continue to grow. So now those little babies there, now those little babies that will have room now to grow into big ones like this one so even this one here you can see those are last season's growth this one here and you can see that the roots the aerial roots are popping out so if you remove that and we chop this one they can also grow from leaves okay hang on now we're gonna go cut here and we twist that this if you put that on the soil that bit there put in the soil that will grow into another plant and that one now with the roots we can remove the bottom leaves just twist it around like so pull it off if you like there you go so that one now planted in the soil that can grow there's another plant there that's grown you can remove the flower stalk or leave it it's fine because in the wild when they break off or touches ground they will start growing again anyway the other side that we've cut off so you got the roots there so just make sure that we chop that's the bottom now this is now the top but since <laughs> I'm getting carried away now okay when I get to the roots ah so this is where the nipper is really good but anyway so I've got that bit now and for this pot now that one I can just set that there with the roots and that one I'll just drop it there they will just find their way home that's the best way of propagating <laughs> when you just drop everything and the plants would just take root now let's go back to the other thrusiflora varigato yeah 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 so i got my magic tweezer here look a little pointy now i'm gonna chop to look at that see can you see the variegation this used to be really really expensive this plant and now the prices has come down but anyway we're gonna go chop up the top look <gasps> look at that okay now we go drop you there and also this is a good way of cleaning up when they flower it looks unsightly but from the flower of the flower stalk we can grow many many plants see some of them will just continue to bloom 
but others will grow new plants anyway anyway guys that's all I've got for this video I have to continue doing this clean it up so I now have a bunch here and anyway I just remove the stalks or the flower stem that sort of dried up like so those ones chuck them away and just pick this up with a tweezer just set it there's a bit of mealybug there but it's not a problem you can spray it or if you can just leave it there the mealybug hates that it's wet and clean so you just keep chopping off the bits and that's it I have to say goodbye to you and please don't cry because I'll just be inside having a cuppa I think I deserve a cuppa after all of this and something really really nice okay that one take that off we don't need those flower stalks now take that off and anyway guys I will see you in the next video I'm just having a good time uh, planting all of this can't remember which end it was but doesn't matter so are you top that's it there now there you go so hopefully next year I'm gonna have lots of this variegated capitella thirsty flora yeah 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 okay because it's hard I'm having holding a camera I'm just gonna stick this in and I'm just gonna snip around the tip with my little cuticle uh, nipper remover okay anyway bye bye have a good weekend it's actually Saturday today so I see you hopefully I get a chance to do some more video I got a couple of days of freebies time and hopefully I can do some video okay Anyway, look at that mealybug. I already sprayed that, so it doesn't matter. You go there. Die, mealybug, die. Okay, doesn't she look pretty now? Look at that. Okay, bye-bye. Are you mealybug? No, it's all those little fluff. I thought it's mealybug. Look, I've got my jelly jam suspended on air. Look, I can swing you around. <laughs> and you still look good. <laughs> look at that. Huh? Beautiful. She is loving the cold at the moment.